this is Craig with Easy Wood Tools. Fixing to do a small hollowing project here. And uh, that would have been a real chore with our existing hollowing tool. We had a lot of customers uh, that enjoyed this tool for the larger hollowing projects, such as this nice piece. We got it dusty. By Chris Pitlick out in Utah. This is a nice size tool for reaching up in there and doing your bigger hobble forms, but not everybody wants to do stuff this big. And whenever you do the smaller stuff, this tool kind of gets in its own way. A uh, big tool, small project, you can get kind of bound up as you travel the tool in and out of the opening there. So along with making a smaller version hollower, this little dude is just right for projects this size and maybe on up to something like this. This is, I haven't measured it, I guess it's about five inches. But now, when I reach up in there that far, you notice I've got the tool at a pretty good angle to the lathe. So something like this would be a, a, about the maximum reach that I want to do with this tool. But let's talk about these new tools we've got. We've got some mid-size hollowers, is what we're naming these tools. You know, it's the new logo for us. We're making quite a few company changes. Uh, new tools, new logos, new smock. Uh, but what we've learned after developing this tool with the full curve to it, that when I'm passing through smaller openings, so throughout the whole project, I've got to bring the tool in, do my cutting, bring the tool out, clean the shavings out. And after I do that several times, uh, each time I'm just getting closer and closer to the inevitable, I'm going to make an oopsie. So what we've learned is a slight curve tool, we can pass this in and out of the opening more easily, do the bulk of the work, and then just come in with the more curve tool to do the extreme undercutting. Project like this, I could choose to drill it out, or I could choose to use the new straight hollower. On a project, we'll go something with a little bit bigger holes so we can see what's going on. So I'd choose the number one tool to clear out the center, and then I would reach around uh, undercutting what I could until I got at an angle that seemed to be a little bit unsafe or kind of got me out of position. And then I would continue the undercutting with the number two tool, reaching further and further until I got to a position that was not quite safe. And then we finish up with the number three tool to do that extreme undercutting. So let's buzz through a little project here and we'll see all the tools cut. I'll do a little bit of cutting just on the end here. If I start working through, if I generate a hole and uh, start working the tools up inside a hole, you won't be able to see the cutting action so well. So we'll do some cutting on the end here with all the tools. So just like any other Easy Wood Tool product, we use all the tools flat and level on the tool rest. And then I want to have the cutter right on center. I'm going to make a little mark here. So you can see I've got my tool rest a little bit too low for me to pass the cutter through center. So I'm just going to raise it up a little bit until I've got that cutting edge right on center. And once I establish that, I can cut me off a little block or, or something this dimension right here. And this dimension will be different depending on what lathe you've got. This is a little Rikon mini lathe. So just a little bit more. Forgive me as I get it just right, but this is important to the process. Okay, now we're right on center. So I can use the number one tool to begin that little bitty hole. What's cool about this tool as compared to our other tools with the round cutters is you notice we've got the relief built right into the tool. So this was our smallest cutter and smallest tool to date, but you can see this new tool with the smaller round cutter, I can really pass through those smaller openings and I've got relief built into the tool. So the reason we've got that relief built in, you can imagine, I. If I was hauling a hole that small, the heel of the tool right there would be hitting on the hole itself if I was on center. And then with the new number one hauler, 
We've got the relief built right into the tool so we can pass through these smaller holes. So, like I say, before I get the hole too deep, I want to go to the number two tool and show you it cutting a little bit. But now I've got to back the tool rest up because I want the tool rest to always be under the super wide toolbar here, under this wide portion. So let's just watch this dude cut a little bit. Thumb on top, keep it flat, keep it level. You notice I can cut going both directions. Uh, that's a pretty nice feature, unique to Easy Wood Tools. I can cut all the way to center with this tool. So with that feature, to be able to cut all the way to center, you may say, well, why not use this tool to do your hole and all? Well, because I've got a sacrifice tool rest position. So I'm going to do as much work as I can with the tool rest up there close and keep the physics on my side. I want more tool on this side of the tool rest than the other side. So I'm gaining, I'm maintaining control of that leverage. So I'm going to do a fairly good size hole so you can kind of see what we're doing here. There'll be a little bit of vibration when I'm hung this far out on a project. This little Rikon mini lathe has fantastic headstock burns. That's one thing you definitely want to look for in a lathe is high quality burns. But even with some of the best burns on the market, we're hung out about eight inches from the support of the burns. So we're going to get a little bit of, a, a little bit of vibration no matter what we do. Now again, I could work to a little bit smaller hole than this, but you wouldn't be able to see what I've done. And again, with the number one tool, the straight tool, I can cut going in or coming out. I don't have to adjust any angles. So this is a little piece of end grain cherry. End grain can be a little bit grabby uh, by nature, but these tools will certainly eliminate most of that. So now that we've got a hole, an entry hole. We're going to scoot out, position the tool rest just right there. Let's do, let's begin our undercutting. So I wanted to clear out so I have room for this tool to pass into open area instead of into a wall back there. So I cleared out with the number one tool. So I've got quite a bit of time uh, learning how to use these tools, I actually design them so I understand the physics. But when you first start out using these tools, I want you to start out on smaller projects. Uh, I don't want you to start with a, a, a big old piece of ingrained coca boba. Start out with something, we call it set yourself up for success. Start out with a piece of fresh cut cherry that's real forgiving. Uh, use a, or pass your tools through a pretty good size hole so you don't get the tool bound as you enter and exit the hole. Uh, just be reasonable about it and do a few smaller projects and build your skills before you go to the advanced projects. So this is the tool I would use for that extreme undercut.